Imagine waking up and not remembering anything from the past 24 hours. You feel okay, maybe a little sore throat, until a sharp, unnatural pressure in your chest stops you cold. What happened? You've been infected. According to real biologists, if a face hugger actually existed, you'd be dead in under two hours. Today, we're diving into the disturbing science behind the face hugger, using real world parasitology and biology. We'll break down how this creature could actually work and why trying to remove it might be the worst decision of your life. If you love terrifying sci-fi with a dose of real science, hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell because what you're about to see will haunt you. If an advanced alien race ever wanted to conquer Earth, they wouldn't need massive death rays or planet killer motherships. They just need a few face huggers. These little nightmares are biological warheads designed for maximum efficiency and minimal resource use. Unlike Earth's parasites, which evolved to coexist with their hosts, the face hugger doesn't care about balance. It's here to use you, kill you, and move on. Everything about it is optimized. Its eight finger-like limbs clamp onto your face with incredible force. Its tail, that's the grappling hook, the anchor, the boa constrictor that seals the deal. Once it latches on, there is no escape. When it hatches, the face hugger's body is soft and vulnerable, but only for a minute. It quickly hardens into a leathery exoskeleton, tougher than most known materials. In less than five minutes, it transforms from fragile to nearly indestructible. And real-world biology isn't that far off. The parasite Toxoplasma gondii, for example, manipulates a rat's brain to make it lose its fear of cats, just to complete its life cycle. But the face hugger, it's not here to manipulate, it's here to obliterate. It doesn't need its host to survive, it needs it to die, fast. And when it strikes, it doesn't miss. So, you've been attacked. It's on your face, and your instinct screams, get it off! But that might kill you faster. The face hugger's limbs act like a biomechanical vice. Pull, twist, pry, and you're just tearing your own face apart. But the real danger is the tail. It wraps around your throat like a reflexive noose. The more you fight, the tighter it squeezes. Imagine a python that reacts to every twitch like a biological trap. That's what you're dealing with. And then there's its blood, molecular acid strong enough to melt through steel. Try cutting it off and you risk spraying acid across your body, the medical team, and the operating room. You can't fight it. It's like trying to defuse a grenade while it's already exploding. And worse, it's aware. The face hugger adapts. Try removing it and it tightens its grip, releases paralytics, or speeds up the implantation process. In seconds, it injects a chemical cocktail that overrides your nervous system. It's faster than any human anesthetic. You black out and the face hugger takes over. It's not just clinging to your face, it's breathing for you, feeding you air, keeping you alive, just enough to finish the job. You're paralyzed, helpless. Your body, it's no longer yours. From the moment it makes contact with your skin, the face hugger unleashes a biochemical assault your immune system has no chance of winning. Step one, paralysis. It injects a neurotoxin through your throat likely using a mechanism similar to DMSO, a real-world chemical that could transport substances through your skin and into your bloodstream in seconds. The dosage? Tailored to your body mass, enough to knock you out, but not kill you. The face hugger calculates that on the fly. Next, it takes over your respiration. It seals your mouth and nose and begins pumping oxygen directly into your lungs, even in toxic environments. It acts like a personal alien life support system, filtering, synthesizing, sustaining. But it's not keeping you alive. 
it's keeping its embryo alive. The facehugger deploys immunosuppressants, chemicals like azathioprine, used in real-world organ transplants to prevent rejection. Your immune system gets dialed down just enough to avoid attacking the alien embryo, but not so much that you die from infection. When it finally lets you go, you feel okay. You might even think you got lucky, but inside you, something is growing. Those 24 hours you were unconscious? That was the birthing phase. Once the face hugger attaches, a trunk-like appendage bypasses your gag reflex and shoves itself down your throat. It delivers two things, air and something far worse. Enter the Plagiarius prepotens, a mutagenetic substance that doesn't just implant an embryo. It rewrites your biology. Your DNA gets hijacked. Your cells start building a xenomorph using the blueprint of your own body. That's why every xenomorph looks different. A human host creates a humanoid alien. A dog results in a quadrupedal version. The monster is literally shaped by you. And while this happens, your body undergoes a metabolic shift. All your energy, nutrients, and resources are rerouted, not to heal you, but to feed the thing inside you. You're not a person anymore. You're a factory. And the face hugger only leaves when the job is done, anywhere from 20 minutes to 16 hours later. By the time you wake up, the damage is done, the embryo is alive, it's growing, and it's waiting. Is there any chance of surviving a face hugger encounter? Technically, yes, but it's like trying to win the lottery with a burning ticket. Face huggers choose their hosts. They scan your biology in seconds. If you have a fatal illness, genetic defects, or incompatible anatomy, they'll reject you and move on. But that's rare. They've successfully implanted in humans, dogs, even engineers. Gaps in compatibility are few and far between. They're not predators, they're specialists. What about medical intervention, surgery, cryogenic freezing? Doesn't matter. That blood, still acid. That tail, still wrapped tight and the face hugger's response systems act faster than a surgeon's scalpel. Extraction is next to impossible. And if you're really unlucky, you get the royal face hugger. This version implants you not just with a xenomorph, but a queen, sometimes even two embryos, the queen and a royal guard. One misstep and you've just seeded a future hive. Not even body armor will save you. That tail can snap bones. The acid will chew through most metals. Once it's on you, you're done. Your only chance, don't let it touch you, ever. The face hugger isn't just science fiction's most terrifying creature. It's a perfect biological parasite, a master class in hostile evolution. When it latches on, it takes everything, your strength, your oxygen, your immune system. Your body becomes a prison, a womb, and when the time comes, the xenomorph doesn't just kill you, it erupts from you, a violent, agonizing death by design. So if one day you're walking through a derelict ship and you hear a hiss and see an egg start to open, don't wait, run. Because if that face hugger gets to you, there won't be a second chance. Enjoyed this deep dive into the terrifying biology of the face hugger? Then hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video with your sci-fi loving friends and let us know in the comments, what would your last words be before a face hugger got you? Thanks for watching, and remember, in space, no one can hear you scream.